Well, we want to thank God for today because truly it is a day that the Lord has made. And he says for us to rejoice and be glad in it. So we just thank God for what he's doing in our lives and, and how he continues to just move uh, in us and, and provide for us. And, and he's an awesome God. So today we want to uh, just go forth and, and bring forth the Word of God and, and have a quick fellowship with Him. And we'll open up in prayer. Hallelujah. So we'll have Elder James go ahead on and open us up in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, most great heavenly Father, we yeah. just want to thank you for this day, Father God. We want to thank you for how you have looked down upon us and how you the special in around us, Lord, during the night, Lord. And we're going to work us up this morning in our right mind, Father. You give us the opportunity to call upon your name. Your name is worthy to be called upon, Father. We just want to thank you for it in your name, say, Father. Father God, we ask you to look down upon the sick and afflicted today, Lord God. Look down upon those that are in the hospitals, Lord God. Look, also look down upon the golden up nursing homes, Lord God, the prisons, yes. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh God, we just want to thank you and let them know, Father God, that you is right by their side. All they have to do, Lord, is just believe in you and call upon your name in the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, and we thank you, dear Lord. Father God, we ask you to look down upon each and every one is on this line today, Father God. Oh, God, we ask you to touch right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Strengthen, Lord God, in your name, say, Father God. Oh, God, to give them what they need from you, Lord, in the name, say, Father God, as long as it's in your will, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, dear Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look down upon the apostle today, Lord God. Oh, God, we ask you to touch her, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen her, Lord God, in your name, say, Father God. Oh, God, we know you have gave our word for us today, Lord God. Oh, God, we ask you to bless this word, God, as it come forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Oh, God, we just want to thank you for all things, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for how you have looked down upon us this world today, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for how you have touched, Lord God, and how you have dealt with some of the problems that we are going through with, Father God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we ask you to continue to look down upon us, Lord. In your name, say, Father God. Oh Heavenly Father, we ask you to look down upon our problems, then, Lord God. Yes. Father, we ask you to touch him right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord God. Right here we get, Father God. Oh, God, let him know, Father God, that she was right by his side, Lord God. In the name of faith, Father. Oh, God, bless the vice troubles then, Lord God. Oh, God, the cabinet, Lord God. Oh, God, look down upon the senators and the house representatives, Lord God. Oh, God, let them know, Father God, that you are the one that they should be calling the, calling the phone, Lord. But, 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 but they are... Oh, God. Yes. For their, um, Lord, my, 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 Bless the Lord. Thank Amen. You. Glory to God. We thank you in your name, Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to look down upon the cash family today, Lord God. Yes, oh, Lord. God, we ask you to touch them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord my God. Lord, my oh, Lord. God, be a comfort for them, Lord God, in your name, Father God. Yes. Let them know, Father God, that you are there, Father God. Oh, you was there for them, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, strengthen them, Lord, in yes. your name. Father, we just want to thank you and give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. We thank God for that prayer. Hallelujah. And uh, we just uh, will go forth in some worship, giving God the glory and the praise. <laughs> For today and for every day, the Lord is, is such a faithful God, and, and he's all that we need. So let us worship Amen. him in prayer and praise, I mean. Amen. So, Elder James, you got a song, right? Hallelujah. Yes, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you're up on the mountain, yeah, and you got peace of mind, 
like you never before. But things change when you're down in the valley. Don't lose your faith, for you're never alone. Yeah. The God of mountains. Yes. Is God in the valley? Yeah. If things go wrong, you make them right. And God of the day is God of the night. Oh, I mixed it up. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. God of, the, God of the good times. Still God of the bad times. When we talk about faith. When we talk about faith. Way up on the mountain. Talk comes so easy. When you like. When you like. And it's bad. <clears throat> now down in the valley, for trials and temptation, that's where your faith is really to do the test. When things go wrong, you make them right. Yes. And the God of the good time. Still God in the bad times, and God of the day, if you God in the night. Hallelujah. I can't go no more because I can't Amen. No Amen. Amen. That, that's My a God. beautiful song. Mm. Uh, thank God. God for it. Hallelujah. Yeah, and we could go forth with um, uh, yeah, another Lord. song. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We could go with our songs that I know. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory, glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Since I lay yeah. my my burdens down glory glory hallelujah since i lay my my burdens down friends don't treat you like they used to since I lay my, my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my, my burdens down, burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down. I feel better, so much better since I lay my, my burdens down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I woke up early this morning. Was able to get out of bed. I put on all of my garments. I said, thank you for my daily bread. I got eyes to see feet to walk 
I got a tongue and I begin to talk. I said, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It could have been another way. I went to visit the sick and the shut in. I stopped by the hospital too. Yes, Lord. I asked the patients how did they feel, and this is what they say to you. You know I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. The Lord God Almighty made my enemy behave. I said, thank you. Thank you, Lord. It could have been another way. Hallelujah. It could have been another way. But we thank God that he has us here today on this line and, and that he is with us because he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. So we give him the glory, the honor that is due to his name. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a prince of peace. He's a mighty God. Mighty God is he. So we thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, is Sister Judy on the line? No, she's not on the line. Okay. Hallelujah. So we're going to go forward. Hallelujah. And know that I, I do have a word for today. Hallelujah. And that is uh, the message would be let your life be a life that pleases God. We ought to please God in our life. So, Father God, I just come forth in your holy name, asking you, O oh God, to increase as I decrease, O oh God. And, Father, let your word be understood, O oh God. Give clarity, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. And we do lift up your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will be coming from the book of Colossians. The first chapter, verses 9 to 14. Hallelujah. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you might walk worthy, hallelujah, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Mm. So, again, we extend welcome to those that are on social media, those that, um, may be on YouTube or Facebook that you would um, uh, visit this video and subscribe to this channel because there's food for your soul. And we just thank God for you. Uh, subscribe. Amen. Help build the kingdom of God on social media. I know. So, 
we want to know that also, and I don't think I read all the verses, but we know that who has delivered us from the power of darkness has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now these uh, six verses gives us reasons why we are to live lives that are pleasing to our Lord. If we just look over our lives in a general way, we will soon realize that if it was not for the Lord on our side, where would we be? So we can't allow the enemy to make us think that our lives are so far from God that he can't see it. Because God can see all things. And, and that we have done such wrong that, that he won't love us anymore or, or he won't forgive us because those are all uh, statements that the enemy speaks. It is not of God because God says just the opposite. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God says that he loves us unconditionally. He said he forgives our sins. So when you hear voices speaking and saying just the opposite of what God's word says, then we know that we are being entertained by the enemy and not God. Hallelujah. Because God does not lie. His word is his will. And his will is his word. And that's why we take the time to study the word of God. We know that God sent his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, to, to die on a cross to forgive us of all our sins. So we need to accept him, have faith in him. For he is the Lamb of God, the only one that is worthy and the only one that can forgive us of our sins. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Oh, we thank the Lord for what he can do. And I believe the word tells us that there is no other name by which we can be saved than Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we do bless his name. But many people, unfortunately, get caught up in what the world system offers them. And they enjoy it. They love uh, the world and, and, and what it offers them. And we know that the world offers sin. Hallelujah. And we know that the battle is not in our, the battle is in our minds. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. Hallelujah. But we are to reject those things that are in the world, those fleshly desires. Hallelujah. And we want to do that which pleases God. And how do we do that which pleases God? Mm -hmm. To live right is the manifestation of being right. Being right in our relationship and fellowship with God. And as believers, we strive to think, act, and speak that which is right 
and proper per God's definition. There's a dignity about us when we are living in a godly way. But without his burning in our hearts, we will surely burn out and fail in our own walk. So I suggest we turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to follow him. You will soon see a change in your life, a change for better. Your desire to, to live in a better way, a life that has purpose, a life that gives you reason, and it was all planned for you by God. So Apostle Paul speaks of some ideas on what a life that pleases God looks like. We see four characteristics of this life that is pleasing. And they are revealed in the three verses, uh, verses 10 to 12. They are bearing fruit, growing in knowledge, and being strengthened, and always give thanks. How can we tell if someone is professing to be a believer, but isn't a believer? Because there are many false uh, prophets that are among us, but we should know the difference and we can tell by watching their lives. If there is not a change in their living, then we can conclude that there's not a change in their heart. Because our heart and our lives, they go together. They are not separate. Whatsoever a man thinketh, that is he. That's what the scripture tells us. So it's important that we remember that fruitfulness do take time. Usually you don't get any big fruits the first year you plant a tree. It takes time for the tree to mature. The same is true for followers of Christ. The change might not be immediately discerned. However, over time, we should be seeing a difference in the way a Christian lives their lives. The person who is living to please God will begin to see a change in their values. And we will see a change in their behavior. Some of the examples could be like those who were, um, say, living together out of marriage. They would want to get married. That's a change. Those that are cheating others will to begin to deal honestly with others. Those who have been abusive in their speech will move towards kindness. Those who were known for using other people will begin to serve others. Those who like tearing down others in their whispering will now seek to build up. Oh, hallelujah. So you see the changes will be just the opposite of what they were before receiving yeah. God. Those who have hoarded their resources will begin to invest more into the kingdom of God. So Amen. when we listen to prescriptions that Jesus gave us in, in John the 15th chapter, it, it'll work because he said, if you remain in me, 
I remain in you. And he says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Did you hear what the Lord just said? If you want to bear fruit, you have to draw closer to the Lord. And the fruit will come naturally. It's not a matter of trying harder. It is more for us to draw closer. Hallelujah. We may quote scripture and recite platitudes on love and and God, but unless we are willing to get involved in the lives of others, we are only blowing smoke. It means nothing. People telling you that they love you and don't do anything for you, you don't see no kind of action backing up that love, then you know they only blowing smoke. Hallelujah. So we must live a life that is pleasing to God. A life that is pleasing uh, in his church as well as outside the church. Whether or not we are, are different in the day-to-day -day world. The life that pleases God is one that glorifies God in your daily life. And how we do our job. How we treat one another even our co-workers some may treat you badly or may not want to even do their jobs but you on the other hand is always willing to do your part and to do it with joy with no complaints helping one another Using these tactics will help us to profit more, make less mistakes, and it increases our relationship with our Lord and Savior. The life that pleases God is one that earns to know more about him. We need to know as much as we can about the Lord in order for us to do better. I think this kind of person that reads the Bible, not primarily for uh, just getting information out of it, but to discern the heart of God. We look for direction. Not merely information. Our prayer is not totally consumed with requests. Lord, help me do this. Lord, I want, I want. No, but we will take time to work on our prayer and relationship with God, waiting patiently for him to say something to us. We want to hear his voice. True Christians want to learn all they can that would help them to know the one they discovered that loves them without any conditions. Because our Lord, our Lord loves us unconditionally. We are to be careful and sure that we seek the truth and not seeking ammunition to defend our own perceptions. We want to please God. I have to even remind myself that I am to read the Bible not just to get a sermon idea or a, a, a way to 
uh, argue or defend my theological convictions. I am to read the Bible because I want to know the truth. I want to know God's heart. Paul tells the Colossians that a life that pleases God is one that is being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. Hallelujah. But notice the purpose of this power. It is given so that we might have what? Great endurance and patience. We want to remain under God. We're going to hang in there because it is the strength that helps us to endure in troubled times. When we have to deal with difficult people, God gives us the strength to be patient and, and to keep us from being that we are not uh, uh, always annoyed. I know in my experience, I've seen that God enables us to endure by giving us the strength of his Holy Spirit. The promises of his Holy Spirit, the word that remains in us. We know that he's in control. Circumstances and people cannot overthrow God's plan. It is important for you to know everything you go through with and everything uh, you do is related to where you are going in the future. Every job you have worked or will work, every experience you are now having or ever had is related to your future. God only does what is good. He does what is good for us. Hallelujah. Glory to his mighty name. And we know that he's a purpose for God. He's, he's, he has a purpose and he makes no mistakes. That's why in hard times, we shouldn't complain, but we trust, trust even the more. We don't want to walk away. We listen and try to learn. We don't despair, but we hang in there as a fighter. We are soldiers for the Lord. And so we put him first. And, and we want to please him in whatever we do. Being strong in, in the times of trouble. My God. Being able to stand and not fall. It's all pleasing. People naturally react to difficult people in a negative way. But when we are in Christ, he begins to give us a different perspective. God teaches us patience with others by reminding us that we were once, sometime in our life, very difficult. And, and people had a hard time with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But someone had the patience to endure and probably helped you, whether you admit it or not. They, they helped to further you into saying, why are they always calm in the midst of turmoil? Who do they know? 
and you begin to want to find answers how you can live your life a life that pleases God. God has a history of transforming people. When we would have gave up, we would have uh, cast them out. But as a Christian now, we must remember that the life that pleases God is the life that lives but gracefully, greatly, spirit-fed, loving, kind, compassionate, having the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. People in general, they complain all the time. They love to complain. And they complain about just about everything. They complain about the weather when they should be grateful to be alive. They complain about how much money they make and the taxes that got to be taken out. Instead, we should be grateful that we have an income. Hallelujah. Because there are some that don't have an income or a job. We complain about the government Though we should be grateful that we don't live in the state that is governed by communism. Where you have no say. We complain about how our food is cooked. How long the waitress takes to service our food. When we are at a restaurant, when we should be grateful that we have food to eat. We complain about other believers. They aren't as spiritual as we want. We're the only ones doing it right. Please, that is self-righteousness. When we should be thanking God that all members do not have the same attitude or function. We complain about traffic when we should be glad we can travel in a car <laughs> hallelujah we complain about crowds in the store when we should be glad that we're able to shop <laughs> my god you i guess you could get the idea i don't want to keep going through it with more and more examples but we can thank god for what he has given us while at the same time feeling he should have given more? If you had that attitude and you go to God, really, do you think he sees a life that is pleasing to him? Instead, what he sees is you complaining about everything and and what he has given is, is, is not enough. What he has given has caused you to feel like you don't have what you need. When he says that he is a provider. So the influence that we have becomes gray. And people don't want to follow that. So then we tell God, oh, Lord, you get in your prayer closet. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. You've done this for me. I'm so pleased. But God is looking at that because he knows how you just complained. <laughs> See, gratitude begins when we realize we do not deserve the inheritance that he has been reserved for us. What he gives us, we don't even deserve. 
And we should spend every waking moment being grateful that God, by his spirit, has pulled us from the jaws of hell. The Lord has taken our dead in life and set it on course for eternity. We must think often of where we would be if he had not drawn us out. So many still live their lives in bondage to sin. An attitude of gratitude grows as we learn to open our eyes to the blessings we take for granted. When was the last time that you thank God for the breath you were able to take, inhale his word, and exhale the poison that is in you. When did you last thank him for the Bible, for fellow believers, for the music that lifts your soul? When did you last thank him for a warm home and the convenience that we consider right while some choose to live in the streets? When did you last thank him for your family? When did you last thank him for the diversity that exists and and that's keeping us honest. All the trials that gives us new perspectives, teaching us how to grow. We grow in gratefulness as we see how wonderful our Savior is. As we study his words and his actions, and as we become more attuned to his character, we will naturally grow in our gratitude that we are united with one. Paul is pointing to the goal. This is what we are working towards, not where we should already be. We need to remember that we cannot bear fruit apart from Christ. These are not trials that we can produce in ourselves by greater effort. Jesus is the only way because he gives life. It's possible that you have listened and realized that you don't have this kind of relationship with Jesus Christ. It's possible that you have just been playing. But friends, before you can live a life that is pleasing to God, you must receive the salvation that God offers. So today I encourage those that are hearing this message, those that can hear the sound of my voice to acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for your stead. And make the confession to be saved. I invite you to tell the Lord that you are willing to trust him. Trust his eternal destiny. You are willing to rely on his provision. I encourage you to let him know that you are willing to let him build a new life for you. The life that you were created to be and to live. And that will be the first step in pleasing God. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. We just thank the Lord. And there are many other things, but we just know that we want to please God. And in, in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 17 says, I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time and there for every purpose and for every work. Live a life pleasing to God. My job is to tell you to be ready and be prepared. For Christ is soon to return. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for what he has shared with us today and hoping that we do uh, receive the instructions that he has given us because we do want to live that life that is pleasing to God. And we thank him. May God bless you. And remember that on Tuesdays, we still have Bible study at 7 p.m. And again, the number that you call is the same number for the line, and that is 609-663-1323. And on Thursdays at 12 noon, we do have the Zoom uh, healing room. And that uh, ID is 787-109-3011. And the passcode is a small M, a capital W, a small X, a capital U, 99. Or you can visit the web web page of heavenly hill ministry tabernacle dot com and you can connect into the healing room that way as well so we just ask the lord to bless to continue to strengthen to clothe us in his righteousness and be for us may you be blessed for the rest of the week and know that Jesus is Lord and that he does love you. Amen and amen. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless now. Take care. Okay.